PayPal confirmed this week that crypto is in the future, at least for some of their 325 million users. Welcome to the program, everyone. We're going to take a closer look at this story, along with some other top headlines, including movement towards the mainstream for Bitcoin and the biggest story of the week, Twitter hack 2020. We're gonna kick off this week covering the great Twitter hack of 2020, where everyone saw that all it takes is one individual to bring down an entire centralized system. This hack started in the crypto space and at the outset looked like an attack on crypto users, but then moved beyond by reaching high profile accounts like presidential candidate Joe Biden and Apple. In the mid afternoon on Wednesday, July 15th, out of the blue, some verified accounts, including Binance, CZ, Gemini, and Coinbase tweeted out this message. We have partnered with Crypto for Health and are giving back 5,000 BTC to the community. Now this was obviously a scam. And the bigger question here was how is this happening? How could it be possible for all these very high profile crypto companies and individuals not have their Twitter accounts locked down. Ripple was then the last major crypto company to be targeted. And just a few minutes later came a tweet from Tesla CEO Elon Musk's account that said, I'm feeling generous because of COVID-19. I'll double any BTC payments sent to my BTC address in the next hour. Good luck and stay safe out there. It was at this point the attacker shifted audiences and went for bigger fish, including Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Barack Obama, Kanye West, presidential candidate Joe Biden, and Apple Computer, whose entire tweet history was deleted. The attack finally ended about three hours later when Twitter disabled the platform for all verified users until they could restore order. This thief made out with over 12 Bitcoin, worth just north of $100,000. According to Twitter support, the breach in their security was due to compromised individuals at the company, and a story in Vice asserts that a Twitter insider was involved. I'll post a link to the article in the description below. The first takeaway here is that a single point of failure can take down an entire centralized system. This is a strong argument for decentralization, and the huge irony I see here is that a centralized system was used to steal Bitcoin. The second is that although some have associated crypto with hacking, more people have now heard about Bitcoin today than yesterday. So a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned rumors of PayPal supporting cryptocurrencies. Fast forward to this week when that news has been confirmed in a letter PayPal sent to the European Commission about the EU building a framework for crypto assets. It's not clear at this time what currencies the company will support, but it is looking to work with multiple exchanges. In the letter, PayPal said, PayPal is continuously monitoring and evaluating global developments in the crypto and blockchain distributed ledger space. Of particular interest for us is how these technologies and crypto assets can be utilized to achieve greater financial inclusion and help reduce, eliminate some of the pain points that exist today in financial services. This shouldn't surprise anyone as PayPal was one of the early adopters of the stunted Facebook crypto project Libra and one of the first to pull out of the project followed by Visa and MasterCard. PayPal hopes within the next three months, depending on what country you live in, if you're a PayPal or Venmo user, you'll be able to buy cryptocurrencies directly within PayPal's app, meaning there could be the potential of over 300 million people who have instant access to the new digital economy. What do you think this will do to the price of Bitcoin? We know it's becoming more scarce by the day. Every time a block is mined, there is less and less Bitcoin to be found. You know what my prediction is? We're going to the moon. Let us know yours in the comments below. We're going to shift gears here a bit and take a look at some pretty astounding movements in the market this week. Link, VeChain, and Tezos were like magic in the portfolio. Chainlink gained 27% over the last seven days, topping out at $8.73 on July 15th, erasing most of the loss over the last year and claiming a spot in the crypto market top 10. VeChain has cooled off a bit since its moonshot last week, but is still managing to hold on to its 89.9% gains in the last 14 days. Was this rally justified or only riding the coattails of other similar projects tying real-world data to the blockchain? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. 
Tezos also saw a seven-day double-digit increase, topping out at $3.28 on July 16th from a low of just under $2.50 earlier in the week. Here's the big number with XTZ though. The one-year gains are over 215%. XTZ seemed to have a rough start, but has made great strides in the last 12 months. If you'd like a wallet to manage your link, VeChain and Tezos tokens, and has features like staking, earning interest on crypto, and sports betting, you can use X. Exodus. Exodus is a crypto application for your mobile device or your desktop that's home to over 100 cryptocurrency wallets and other crypto apps. Click the link above to learn more and download Exodus today. We can add a couple more examples of institutional adoption for this week's crypto news. Digital asset manager Grayscale Investments saw a record-breaking $900 million worth of crypto flow into its trust funds for Q2, bringing their trust first half of the year purchases up to about $1.4 billion. Our friends over at Decrypt have broken this down for us, and according to Grayscale's Q2 report, over 85% of the money came from institutional investors. And while the majority was held in Bitcoin, $135 million went towards their Ethereum trust with Grayscale's Litecoin and BCH trusts having their largest inflow since 2018. The report shows that assets held in Grayscale's various altcoin trusts are up a whopping 650% in the last 12 months. Now all these numbers sound really impressive, and it sure looks like we're past the chasm of discovery, at least for large-scale institutions. So what does that really mean for you and I? We can figure that out with the next nugget of information gleaned and widely covered from the report indicating that since the last halving, that was just a couple of months ago, that inflows into their Bitcoin trust have exceeded the newly minted Bitcoin in the same period. Let's let that sink in. The fund manager said that this in itself could cause a reduction in supply side pressure. This of course could cause the price of Bitcoin to go where? Of course, this is just for illustrative purposes. Grayscale is not actually buying 1.5 times the amount of newly minted coins and factors in what they consider in-kind purchases, meaning that these are payments, not purchases. I don't know how this accounting is done, but Grayscale indicates that they are only actually buying 31% of newly minted coins. Let's do a little treasure hunt. What's the total amount of BTC Grayscale holds in their trust? I'll highlight the viewer with the first right answer in the comments below on next week's program. We can keep going here on the institutional investment train. $2 trillion asset manager Fidelity Investments is no stranger to Bitcoin. We did a story on Fidelity late last year about their opening up custodial BTC solutions for institutional investors. Let's take a look. If you said Fidelity Investments, you've probably already read the news before seeing this program. This is significant news because they're one of the very first large companies involved in traditional finance to roll out digital asset custody services. In this story, we found that Fidelity was actually an early adopter into the crypto ecosystem and had a Skunk Works mining facility set up in one of their office buildings. According to the CEO of Fidelity, Abigail Johnson, in a 2017 talk at Consensus, she said, we set up a small Bitcoin and Ethereum mining operation that miraculously now is actually making a lot of money. Well, this week, news surfaced that Fidelity has not lost the mining bug and has purchased a large stake in Canadian mining firm Hut8. Hut8 raised $6.1 million in June by selling shares to investors as it plans to ramp up its mining capacity. And at the front of the line was Fidelity who gobbled up a majority of the offering. Turns out Fidelity was the largest investor in Hut 8's US 6.1 million public offering from last month. According to recent filings, Fidelity purchased 71% of the units. This is combo shares and warrants sold in the offering. Fidelity now owns 10.6% of HUD 8's outstanding shares. I'm sure Fidelity can smell future profits from mining and it's proof that the trusted and respected firm is open-minded towards crypto. What more could you ask for? That's all the news for today. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Please leave your thoughts about any of the stories in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more crypto videos from Exodus. Until next time, hold on.